What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Let's run through some stuff today. Okay, we're going to be covering off just a couple of things today that I think are of vital importance so that you can make a good, steady lawn plan, um, know what you're actually treating, and what you need to treat it with. So I will have timestamps down below that if there's things you want to jump ahead to, feel free. But we're going to run through some grasses here real quick and at least give everybody an idea of what they're looking at. Let's take those off. Probably the crabgrass or the Dallas grass is what grabbed your attention to come on to watch this video. So we need to just lay out a couple of things first so that you at least know what you're looking at because those two do get confused by people on a pretty regular basis. I've been seeing it a lot online and now it's time to just make sure that everybody knows exactly what they're looking at. So the first thing I want you to do, hop on your old Google device, get on the Google machine. You can take a look at something called the Virginia Tech Weed Identification App and it's not actually an app or maybe there is an app, but it takes you to a webpage. On that webpage, they have a, a pretty significant list of, of weeds and if you're pretty confident you know what it is you can type it right into the search bar there bang pull it up if it matches everything that you're holding in your hand great if it doesn't there's another way to do things you can select on the grassy weeds section and then you can go down each and every descriptive term and select it with images so that you know what you're looking at and eventually it will give you options and then you will see the options and then you will know exactly what you need to look for that is a wonderful, wonderful resource, and it is something made available to everybody. Now, something else you can do, most land-grant universities or ag schools, uh, horticultural schools in whatever state you are in will have some sort of a publication about the most common, most common native lawn weeds for your area. The stuff you're gonna be dealing with. Most of the time, it's a downloadable PDF. You can pull up, there might be 50, 60 different species. You might have considerably more, hundreds like you might in Florida or whatever, but you can find those very easily. So it's almost June. Now down South where I was in Texas over the last weekend in South Texas, uh, crabgrass is starting to show. It's not fully developed yet, barely in a one or two leaf stage. It's just sort of coming up out of the ground and it's hot. It has been in the nineties, it has been wet and it's starting to show up. So. For most places of the country, unless you're in very southern regions, you may not be seeing crabgrass yet unless you have been in some severe heat. Now, when you do see it, it's going to look lime green. That is your first telltale sign that that's what's coming up out of the ground. Lime green, and it begins to come up, and it looks like a corn stalk before it decides to lay down and begin to spread across your lawn. So, so if you're seeing a different color grass that's sort of come up in a bunch and is laying down and maybe has a long stem on it as well, likely you are looking at Dallas grass. Now Dallas grass kind of grows out in a ring and a lot of the time you will see whatever your dominant turf species is kind of growing in the center of it and it tends to grow and spread out in a direction laterally. But it's out earlier than crabgrass is. It's out and up, grows in a bunch, produces a ton of seeds, and really there are a few treatments for it, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now this was all around a tea box, so that tea box obviously is getting a lot of water. It's also very warm out there and exposed on the hillside, so you can take a look and see right here is Dallas grass. And you can tell that ring, and you can see how it lays flat, and even a lot of mowers, particularly rotary mowers, will not take that seed head off because it stays low. So obviously, quick and dirty version, you can cut it out can cut it out, remove it, but you need to know that there are rhizomes in there and sometimes you won't get the whole plant, so you need to pay attention to that. That is probably, from when I see people trying to identify uh, or have concern about a grass in their lawn, Dallas and uh, crabgrass are the two that could confuse the most. Now this is a southern grass. I'm not going to see that up here. That is a paspalum family, so it tends to grow where it's warmer anyway. So southern folk are gonna see that a heck of a lot more. Interestingly enough, now where I am, what we do see a lot of around here is a grass called cheat grass, which tends to grow in a star-like pattern and then it stands up and has sort of these kind of beautiful wispy seeds and that stuff can spread and propagate really, really easily. Aside from that, just in the intro of this video, you would have seen a few things just growing around the outskirts of my property here, which would have been the cheat grass. There's also foxtail. There's also uh, annual ryegrass that tends to be growing, and there's annual bluegrass. All of those uh, tend to do well around the outside of the lawn here. 
Now that one here in Utah, I see in people's lawns on a regular basis, as well as tall fescue. Tall fescue grows in a clump. And I'm not talking about turf type tall fescue. I am talking about like the pasture type or wild fescue or however you want to look at it. It grows in a very tight bunch and it stands up way faster. Blades are super wide and it's kind of an eyesore in a lot of people's lawns. So that is one also here in this state people confuse as well for crabgrass. So there was also nuts edge growing out on the golf course. So nuts edge was as well kind of working its way around the collars of the tee boxes. You could find it around the greens that was growing up as well. So just in this one small area where I was able to walk around, there were three main big problems. The poa down there was already cooking out. So also, this is a 100% zoysia golf course. So there was poa growing in it. And when I say poa, uh, I mean poa anua. There was poa anua growing in it. There was uh, crabgrass. There was Dallas grass. There was goose grass. Uh, and there was uh, nutsedge as well. So it kind of had everything, which meant it was going to need a pretty good blast of herbicides to knock all of that out. This is the part of the video where I give my typical spiel about turf health, overall turf health. It is all too common that most people get tied up on the pesticide side of things. And when I say pesticide, this is all en um, encompassing kind of everything. But for this, let's say herbicides. So we all know that weeds will not grow unless they have a space to grow. And the only reason they would have a space to grow is because there was A, damage to the turf from maybe another vector, maybe maybe chinch bugs, maybe something else opened up some ground, maybe scalped with a mower, maybe it's just a hot spot that dried out too much, maybe your weed eater is a little too close and you're cutting down into the edges, places where your irrigation don't work. This is the point in time where becoming a detective, sleuthing it out, and seeing exactly what's happening to have those spaces open up is of absolutely 100% vital importance. The healthier and thicker and denser and better coverage you get on your turf, the less chance you will be dealing with any of these stuff. And I can't stress that enough. Once you find an area where you do have repeated invasion, whether or not you're on a strong pre-emergent game or not, um, this is the time where you really need to look at what you can fill back into that space. This is a time for bringing in even a patch filler like the Turf Men product where you can quickly just sort of recultivate the ground, spread some down there, get seed coverage, get it growing back up there because ultimately you want grass growing in those places. That's the big deal. And if you have a lot of beds or bedding areas that touch into the grass areas and you get weeds in those areas, you know, deeper coverings of mulch make a big difference. You can put pre-emergent in your beds. There's all kinds of things that you can do to help prevent that. The most important thing before you put out, before you put out a herbicide, is know what the target pest is that you're actually treating, number one. Two, make sure you read the label and get your app rates correct. There are plenty of times where even I've seen in videos and things where the absolute wrong product is recommended for everybody. So there is a place for everything. So there are some things out there that are coming down the pike um, there are some that you can use that will treat certain crabgrasses at certain rates. Again, uh, Celsius is a widely used for uh, broadleaf and for crabgrass, but it's a different rate, and so it needs to be looked at before it's used. Obviously, in uh, the northern areas, quinclorac is used a ton. There are some follow-ups that have to be done in order to take that out. Um, there are a lot of people using tenacity. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that that one will cover off, so you do have options. But... Let's go ahead and talk to Rod for a little bit, see what all he has to say about some of these things, some of the offerings out there, and give you guys some more clues. And then uh, we'll continue on after that. Hey, look who it is. It's Rod Marquardt from New Farm. What's happening, Awesome. Buddy? How are you? I am doing well. How are you doing? You look much smaller than normal. Oh, that's better. That's the guy. That's the one I know. It's funny. <laughs> we'll start with crabgrass. Talk a little cool season, maybe. Talk a little warm season, and talk about how people who have St. Augustine are screwed. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, you know, there's, there's so many different parts of the country that uh, it kind of depends where you are, but I, I really believe strongly in a good pre-emergent program to keep your crabgrass under control and uh, to go along with a pre-emergent program, healthy turf. Healthy turf. So, 
that's uh, the, that's the first step is healthy turf and strong roots. That's right. Absolutely. Um, from there, uh, you're still going to have some crabgrass breakthrough, and having pre-emergent herbicide down is going to make a world of difference. Uh, in a lot of part of the country, you're probably too late if you haven't put your pre-emergent down. Um, maybe in Maine or Minnesota, but even up there, I think it's getting to that point where the window may have been missed. Mm -hmm. um, Dithiopyr, which is, I think, Dimension would be a, a still good option because it kills crabgrass when it's really small, so yep. the label says. Um, but it, it'll still make a difference. And the thing about crabgrass is it, it doesn't all germinate at once. Mm -hmm. So even if you miss the window, it continues to germinate season long. So at least you can control the crabgrass that's coming up later. Sure. It's just that once you've missed what you've missed, now it's you've there. got to go to a, a post-emergent um, program, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. Correct. Uh, there, there, there are still options out there. Most common is your quinclorax. Quinclorax, yep. And uh, um, there's a lot of quinclorax out there. The new farm quinclorax is called Q-Ball. The one that's pure quinclorac, it's, it's the nice thing about it is we have some really low volume applications on the label. And I know a lot of the guys are going towards that low volume usage now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's nice. It has a real nice uh, formulation. Um, our other one is Quincept, mm -hmm. which is a, a mix of quinclorac and 240 and dicamba. dicamba. Um, so it's uh, it's going to do a little bit more than just your, your crabgrass, but it's a nice... Um, crassy weed killer as well. So those are our two that we have that are selective grass killers out of cool season turf grasses. Um, of course, we used to have Last Call, which had phenoxaprop in it, but we no longer manufacture that. Um, the active ingredient phenoxaprop can still be found in a claim, a claim mm -hmm. extra. Um, real nice grass killer or uh, crabgrass killer as well. So that's another one I would look into. Um, the only thing about that is you don't want to spray it when, when around the time that you spray a phenoxy herbicide, like a 2,4-D, because a 2,4-D will cancel out the phenoxyprop. Gotcha. Or reduce its effectiveness, I should say, more to the point. Um, like you said, people in St. Augustine areas are uh, um, that much more reliant on a pre-emergent program. And if you don't get crabgrass with a pre-emergent program, you got to do what I do, and that's uh, pull it by hand. That's right. Bend the knees. Bend the knees. Bend the knees. That's it. Get in there with bend the knees in one glove and you'll make it happen. Um, or two. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, that is, I know a lot of people come up. So, let's talk about another big one that uh, a lot of people are talking about right now, which is a new, um, which is a PGR. Okay. So, it's a PGR, plant growth, growth regulator. We call it a TGR. So, when it is labeled for turf, it's a turf growth regulator. Um, really nice... Uh, growth regulation in turf. Um, I did my first application three weeks ago at my house and the, the, the regulation is just fantastic. I did it last summer and in St. Augustine grass in Florida, when I can mow my grass once every three weeks compared to mowing every five or six days, it's a, it's a huge deal. Um, the side benefit that you're talking about is the regulation that it gives um, at high rates on POA. So, we're, we're labeled to regulate POA as well mm -hmm. um, as they used to regulate like in a golf course or if you want to go to lower or the standard rates, it will just regulate it nicely and cause no damage to it. But if you're at the full rate, which is uh, on fescue or zoysia or something like that at 16 ounces per acre, it will regulate the fescue, but it will really, really, really regulate the POA. And so we're seeing some nice results where it's really knocking the POA back and reducing it to the point that... Uh, the, the, the fescue or the zoysia or the Bermuda or whatever you're using it on will completely out-compete. And, and not just in a way that we've seen in the past when people say out-compete, where you treat it and you, it kind of sits there and then it comes back. No, it really out-competes it to the point where it almost acts like a herbicide, but it's not. It's, it's still growth regulation. Got it. So, yeah. And then that, yeah. that basically just gets you the time frame to get into uh, when the grass can't propagate anyway, which is the hot hot summer months so you're choking it back so it can't continue to move forward does that exactly. prevent seeding yes it does it, it reduces seed head production big time um it really it makes a big difference and uh we, we've got a couple of of training modules and videos and things like that that i'm going to send you yes um uh, and uh, a couple of uh, of our youtube friends have also done some yep. some things out there with this that uh 
they did a unbiased evaluation um, and shared their their results. And I've been just thrilled with the uh, with the results that we've seen and, and that they're getting, and they've been thrilled with it. So uh, it's it's been a lot of fun to work with, and and it was you know geared towards the golf course people initially, and the opportunity that I've seen with the lawn care companies out there. It's been uh, it's been really neat to see it. Yeah, good. I will actually, I'll put links to what Rod's going to send me as well as to the videos that he was speaking of. There's some there's some stuff out there that's kind of cool. Paul Outlaw did some, uh, a couple different things with the new, and so I'll, I'll have links in the description for that as well. Uh, all right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would I want to throw at you and use your brain for today. Hmm. Well, we're talking about grassy weeds. Yes. Um, you know, a big one that you hear a lot about is Dallas grass. Dallas grass, big one. And um, uh, from from what I've heard, that manuscript is supposed to have some results on it. But again, that's a Syngenta product. I don't have um, any personal use of, of using it. Um, Certainty is still a good uh, grass killer for, for a lot of uses in warm season turf. So mm -hmm. it can take rye out of your Bermuda. It'll take fescue out of Bermuda. It'll knock back Dallas grass to a certain extent. Um, the old mix to get rid of Dallas grass was MSMA and, and Certainty together. Yep. But unfortunately, uh, MSMA is no longer on the table. That's right. Um, I know there are some MSA task forces, you could say, for lack of better words, that are fighting to get it back, particularly mm -hmm. in Georgia. Um, we'll see as to how effective they are about bringing that back to market. But um, but Certainty is a nice option for uh, a, quite a few um, grassy weeds and things out there in addition um, of course, that's that's within your warm season turf. It is able to suppress quack grass. Uh, that's it, good. But again, we used to be labeled in Kentucky bluegrass, but the, that's been removed from the label. So, um, but it will uh, suppress quack grass as well, which which is a grass I grew up fighting in Canada. But um, now I fight crab grass in Florida. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to be one thing or the other. There you go. All right. Good. I, I think that's good. I think that really helps. That's going to steer people in a good direction. So um, we'll uh, we'll run with that and see what other trouble I can get into with everybody. Excellent. Awesome. Well, my friend, it's good to see your face. Hopefully we'll get to do it again in person. Absolutely. I look forward to it. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, John. Okay, so that was my good buddy, Rod. I really appreciate him coming on here. You know, he's doing... Uh, a lot from home like the rest of us right now so you know it's it was just really nice to see one of my good friends for a few minutes and joke around and a lot of that stuff was not on the video but I think you could probably get the idea so over the next while we'll get a little more in depth into looking at some of these grasses and uh, some of the controls that you have available to you but for now I just want you to take a look down below look in the links there's a ton of info down there places you can follow along link to the Virginia Tech site to some of the products that were mentioned here and um, some, some good resources on what you can do for treating your crabgrass or Dallas grass or whatever it may be. That's it. That's all I got. I hope you guys are having a wonderful and beautiful spring. And I will talk to you guys real soon. See ya.